this is, this is when this happened. This is when I accepted my call. This is when I trusted God to protect me, to empower me. This is when I trusted God to sort out the mess in my life. This is when I called on God because I didn't have the courage to do or go where I was supposed to go or say what I was supposed to say. That's what the oil does. And there are a few oils that get used also. Um, also when we when Jesus, were, when Jesus was born, right, about a couple years later, remember the Magi? You sung that song, We Three Kings of Orient, or, right? Okay. Those guys, they brought gold, they brought frankincense, and they brought myrrh. You're like, what are those things? Because in our culture, we're like, okay, whatever. Well, the interesting thing is, is that I dabble in essential oils sometimes. It's, it helps. Um, but, so I thought, oh, I have, I have frankincense and I have myrrh. Well, the gold, it turns out, was, we think it was, because who knows? No one interviewed the Magi. No one interviewed them and videotaped them and um, asked them why they brought what they brought, right? But what we can guess is, is the symbolism of that. And, and honestly, that may not have actually happened the way that we have learned the story. But why is that important? It was important because Jesus was then, um, the gold is kind of a symbol of his kingliness and the frankincense of his priestliness. Because frankincense is, is, was used and um, may still be used as a, um, within the rituals of the church. Myrrh. Myrrh is a symbol of death. Myrrh is often used um, on the strips of fabric. Later on this week, when you're, um, when you're doing your Saturday night Easter vigil, um, <laughs> um, you will read that there are, um, they took strips of cloth, the, the women who came to the tomb, and they had frankincense, they had myrrh and aloe, just to kind of hold it. Um, and then they used other things like cinnamon, to prepare the body three days after um, someone had been gone. So it's part of that for his death as well. And so all of these are used at very different times, really important times in Jesus' life. They're used now within our the greater Christian community as well. And the interesting thing I love about this is, is that Jesus really goes through, and if you remember the story of this week, Coming up. Jesus walks through the valley of the shadow of death, right? He is betrayed. He is tortured. He is, um, he is fearful in the Garden of Gethsemane. He is hung on a cross to die a cruel, cruel death and then placed in a tomb. There is nothing that I can go through that will probably exceed that kind of suffering. For my greatest fears, I don't know about you, usually is betrayal, pain, fear, and death. The wonderful thing that we know now, 2,000 years ago, afterwards is that we know the end of that story and we are awfully quick to jump to the end of the story. We like to wave our palms on Palm Sunday and then, you know, sun, next Sunday morning we strap on our Easter bonnets, we get out our, our chocolate and our Easter eggs and we're like, woohoo, we're resurrection people. You cannot get to resurrection without trusting with every soul, part of your being. But love always wins. Okay, if you get another chance at this, okay? Repeat it with me. Love, love always, always wins. Yes. Love always, always, always wins. But 
it's from, the t from between here and next Sunday. That's where we live. And so the beautiful, wonderful thing is that you are already anointed. You are already covered and protected. You are already called out. You are already someone who walks with this covering. No matter what you face in between here and resurrection. And that may not, this week may not fit the calendar of your life. Your resurrection may be a ways out. You may have an awful lot of walking and donkey riding and all of that to do between here and there. But the truth is, love always wins and you are already equipped. You are. You are already ready for this week. For whatever comes, you have already been anointed. Thanks be to God.